Singapore's fourth generation leaders say they will need more time to choose another leader. Associate Professor Eugene Tan from the Singapore Management University is still with us as we take a closer look at today's developments. So this cabinet reshuffle then due in two weeks' time. Deputy Prime Minister Heng will relinquish his role as finance minister. How will this affect long-term economic planning? I don't think there'll be any significant uh, impact. Uh, you know, in, in many respects, you know, the, the sort of economic uh, options that are open to us, the economic choices are somewhat limited. Um, we're also looking at very much the same uh, 4G team that is in place. Um, and the longer term plans, you know, have already been, been, been laid out. You know, the question is fine tuning them in light of uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, um, you know, so I would say that you know, in terms of the impact, uh, it would not be so much you know what's happening within Singapore. Uh, it would be very much uh, more impacted by the external uh, global landscape uh, and how post COVID nineteen, uh, you know, as the changes are still unfolding, um, how that's going to impact upon us. What would be the appropriate e economic policies? That to me will will be the greater impact. Professor Tan, the 4G team are still in place, but what will the immediate challenges be for them in light of this decision? Don, you know, the, the immediate challenges remain in many ways unchanged. Uh, I think keeping COVID-19 pandemic at bay remains a topmost priority because that sets you up, you know, for a good recovery. Uh, but a good recovery will also mean, you know, rolling out plans, you know, so that when the upturn comes, we will be able, uh, you know, to ride uh, in the wave of recovery. Um, but other than that, you know, I think it is important for the 4G, you know, given this setback, you know, to, to demonstrate, you know, that there is resolve uh, and unity, uh, you know, to, to work as a team uh, and take Singapore you know, to, to new heights. Um, so to me, I think when we look at the immediate challenges, uh, in many respects, you know, they, they, they remain unchanged. But what perhaps, you know, one could say would uh, have a, a significant uh, influence on how people look at 4G, you know, would be really how they navigate this crisis uh, and how they come together as a team. Uh, and, and I would say that the, the COVID-19 pandemic crisis, you know, provides a good opportunity. The real question is, what do they make of it? And what do you think the party could be looking for then in the next uh, prime, prime, prime Minister? No difference in, in many respects from what they have sought to look for, uh, you know, in uh, previous uh, leadership renewals. I think here you're looking at someone who's able to command, you know, not just, you know, the respect of his cabinet colleagues, but also the respect, trust and confidence, you know, of uh, Singaporeans. We're also looking at someone who is able to build a, build a team, uh, you know, Simply because, you know, the job of governing Singapore, you know, while there is the first amount of equals in a prime minister, uh, you know, there is that, that need, you know, to ensure that uh, we are able to bring together people of different talents, you know, each complementing each other. Uh, and so, you know, ensuring that, you know, the, the top leadership team is robust, you know, doesn't suffer from groupthink. Um, but I think in this particular context, you know, of, of uh, the change in, in plans, I think we also need to look at uh, not just who is going to succeed Prime Minister uh, Lee Sen Loong, you know, but who is going to uh, be the right hand man of uh, to the 4G uh, Prime Minister. Uh, I think you know we need to look at this pair, and I think the 4G leaders, you know, will be very much uh, be focusing, you know, on, on who the pair that they think you know will best fit Singapore, you know, to, and, and and bring the team as well as the country, um, you know, to new heights. Well, as this 4G team begin their considerations as to who should be the next Prime Minister in waiting, Professor Tan, what are the critical indicators that we should be looking out for? I wouldn't, you know, although many people would, um, you know, be focusing on uh, the cabinet reshuffle uh, in about two weeks' time. Uh, I think that's premature. Uh, I, I think certainly many... All eyes would be on who takes over as finance minister uh, from DPM Heng. Uh, but I think, you know, all this is really premature. I think what's really important, you know, would be to see, um, you know, how the team shapes up, you know, in their new portfolios. I mean, this 
uh, cabinet reshuffle is somewhat premature, right? It, it comes only about nine months after uh, the cabinet ministers have assumed you know, their positions after the July 2020 uh, general election. Uh, but with Ms. DPA Henry stepping aside, you know, I think there is a need to, to reorganize um, you know, the, the lineup. Uh, I would say that you know, it's really how each minister you know, in their respective ministry you know, deals with the challenges that uh, COVID-19 uh, has thrown at us. Uh, and that means also preparing Singapore you know, for a post-COVID world. So when you look at what COVID-19 has been doing, you know, it, you know, it has uh, turned many things on its head. And, and, and so what may have worked in the past, uh, you know, fundamental uh, uh, concerns, you know, while they remain unchanged, uh, how we may go about achieving them you know, will have to be uh, re-evaluated. Um, you know, so, so I would say that you know, we should pay more attention you know, to how uh, the cabinet, uh, the, the 4G leaders, uh, thrive in, in, in their new positions uh, and, and at another level, you know, to see how they work together, you know, even though, right, you know, the, the 4G leaders, you know, in some respects, you know, will be looking at, at, at whether, you know, they fit the bill as a prime minister or, you know, would some, who else, you know, would, would, would fit the bill. Um, but I think the focus must be on the task at hand. Uh, you know, it must be about Singapore. It must not be about you know, who's going to be the next prime minister. I think when they, when they are focused on the journey of getting Singapore out of this crisis and thriving post-crisis, I think, you know, the leadership succession will take care of itself. Um, but who is that person going to be will be the question on the lips of many, uh, Professor Tan. And so I've got to ask you as well, based on your reading of it or your take on it, who do you see as being the front runners? I think in many respects, you know, the front runners, uh, you know, are probably not very different from what it was uh, pre-2018. Um, you know, so in no particular order, you know, I think you know, when we look at in terms of uh, you know, the, the cabinet experience, uh, then uh, I would say that uh, uh, Minister Chan Chun Singh, uh, Minister Ong Yi Kang, uh, and Minister Lawrence Wong. Uh, I would also include uh, Minister Desmond Lee you know, a, a, as, as a dark horse. You know? But I think in many ways, you know, uh, I'm probably sticking out my neck, you know, but I, I, I would say that, you know, when you look at the sort of portfolios uh, these gentlemen uh, have held, the sort of challenges that they've been given, I think in many respects, you know, they do indicate uh, the potential uh, and the expectations that the, the, the senior government leaders have of them. And the question is whether they, they'll measure up and also whether, you know, they would be able to inspire trust and confidence of Singaporeans because they are not just going to be, you know, the leader of the cabinet, you know, they are also going to be leader of uh, Singaporeans, you know, so, so the need to be able to galvanize them in a very challenging uh, uh, post-COVID world, uh, you know, that certainly will be something that, uh, you know, all potential prime ministers, you know, will have to work hard on. Yes, fascinating few months ahead. Thanks so much for your thoughts as always. Associate Professor Eugene Tan from the Singapore Management University.